I first encountered the Norse gods um, in an English reprint of Marvel Comics when I was about six, maybe seven years old. Um, that was how I first met Thor, and I wanted to know more about them. And my friend Stephen had a copy of Myths of the Norsemen by Roger Lancelin Green. And so I would go over to his house and I would read it. But the one that I remember falling in love with was the point where Thor and Loki um, have camped out for the night in a most peculiar house. And it's not until morning they realize that they were in a giant's mitten. Um, and that I remember just loving, I think partly loving because of what it does to your idea of the sense of scale. I took enormous joy in retelling that story in Norse mythology. I love myths. Um, I am a, a absolute myth junkie. I think they are all of them wonderful and delightful. All of them deserve to be retold. But there's something in the Norse that is dark and weird. Um, it comes with, with Ragnarok. Most myth cycles don't come with the end of days. But there's something about the Norse myths that feel peculiarly complete. Even though we know we're missing hundreds of fantastic stories. There are gods and goddesses that we know exist, but we have no idea what their stories are. I guess if I had to pick, definitely my favorite goddess is Freya, because she gets so fantastically grumpy. Um, and you feel like she is, yes, she's beautiful, she's also really smart, she also realizes much more than anybody else seems to what idiots the other gods are. I think what I'm most proud of is the tone of voice. I felt like I, I found a way to tell old stories that didn't feel old. Sometimes it feels important, um, but I wanted the stories to feel immediate. I wanted them to feel contemporary, even if they're contemporary looking back a long way. Um, I wanted the gods to feel like people we knew, and I think I managed it. And if I'm proudest of anything, that's what I'm proudest of.